What's up guys, Jacob Owens here for the Buff Nerds, and today I wanted to talk to you guys about my camera setup for 2018. So this is my Red Helium 8K. Um, lately I've been getting a lot of questions, you know, mainly on Instagram about what camera I use for my big budget productions, kind of all around productions, um, as well as a comparison. There's a lot of people looking to invest in RED. They know I shoot on RED and they were you know, inquiring or asking me about the difference between the different RED cameras, the RED Gemini, the RED Helium, the RED Monstro, but more in particular between the Gemini and the Helium because those are the more affordable, uh, if you will, RED cameras on the market. So I ended up opting with the RED Helium 8K, but I'm kind of regretting it in the sense of I almost wish I would have just went with the uh, the RED Gemini, and I'll get into that for a couple reasons uh, coming up because I know a lot of you guys are interested in that topic and the difference between those cameras and which I would prefer, so I'll get into that in a minute. But yeah, first up, uh, if you don't know who I am, Jacob Owens owner of this YouTube channel, but I also, as you know, I do YouTube as a hobby and just for fun and I like to inform people and, and coach people and give people information and advice pertaining to filmmaking, behind the scenes, uh, life advice in general and all that good stuff. Um, but I own my own production company, I shoot a lot of music videos, commercials, films, uh, branded content, TV shows, uh, documentaries, a lot of different stuff. And uh, this is the go-to camera build, and I'll get into this build in particular and what I might recommend for you guys. So first off, let's just get into it. This is the RED 8K Helium Brain. Um, then as far as accessories go, if you're looking for the accessories to the camera, never buy the accessories directly from RED off their website. They're always uh, very, very expensive, and you can find better alternatives for your money elsewhere. For example, wooden camera. So this top plate right here is a pass-through top plate for my monitor and handle, both of which are red. I got, you have to buy the red monitor when you buy the camera um, as well. You don't have to buy the top handle, but I preferred to buy it just because of the grip and the start-stop button right on top there. Um, but the pass-through top plate allows you from wooden camera to mount these things to the top plate as well as have a lot of other options and I think I believe it was only around three hundred dollars whereas if you buy the red top through plate it's like a thousand so that's a good example of you're looking for add-on accessories uh, mounting options to your camera a place like wooden camera is gonna be the best for you um, going off wooden camera my matte box out front wooden camera the uh, bottom plate where I can mount my rods wooden camera so wooden camera accessories kind of all around to to fill out uh, my camera package here. I opted to go with the side handle here from RED. Um, I love just operating handheld a lot. As a lot of you guys may know, may know uh, handheld all day, make handheld great again. And so I, I love the side handle here and I can tuck it um, if I'm using an easy rig, pull up top here and I can tuck it in, operate with that handle. You got the button right there off to the side. So I really prefer the, the side handle. You can get it without the side handle and it's just flush there. Um, that's better for like Ronin operating and, and you can switch it out um, very pretty easily but I just pretty much always leave that guy on there because I love to just run and gun with this guy. So from there, top handle, you always, you just always have to have a top handle. And for me uh, particular, again, love to go handheld, move around a lot and I like a lot of low angles kind of shooting up that's uh, my preferred kind of angle. It just feels bigger, more powerful. And so, um, you know, using a top handle will allow you to kind of hold it down, get that low angle, um, and gives you just a little more control and ease to move around as well. I opted to go with the big seven inch monitor. The four inch is just way too small. It gets really hard to see. Uh, so I got the seven inch here that again, bought the top through plate so I could just mount straight to the top. And then um, I also got the battery expander pack here. So this allows me to have a lot of sound options uh, back here, um, hookups, HDMI, all that good stuff. And then run a V-mount battery. I like V-mount. Um, I just go with V-mount and in particular, Anton Bauer. I have these two, well I have more than these two, but um, I have these two models of Anton Bauer batteries, the Cine 90s and the Dionic XT 90s. Um, 
I have the 90s because I can travel with them. If I were to go 150, uh, you wouldn't be able to travel with them. They're too too powerful and they're not travel regulated like that. Like So, gotta get the 90s. It's in the 90, XT90, Anton Bauer are my go-tos and they always just really, really quality and they always just hold up. So, I got a bunch of Anton Bauer batteries. But yeah, then from there, I just have these uh, rods from Small Rig. Um, you can get rods uh, really anywhere from a bunch of different companies. But wooden camera, bottom plate with the rod mount. Rod goes in, wooden camera, matte box. I actually have the, uh, I'm not sure of the model. The Here we go, the UMB1. So inside of the matte box, I run Tiffin ND filters, um, as well as some of the other filters I like to use are uh, Black Magic and Promis. Kind of softens the highlights, gives it a more film look, creates a less digital image. Um, and I use those a lot with just Tiffin screw-ons for Canon lenses. I don't have my cinema lenses on here right now because they're back home in Arizona, but uh, typically run a PL mount. I do, so I have the Canon mount just for easier run and gun shoots when I need to like use a Canon lens um, in less, you know, you know, stylistic cinema shoots. But I do have a PL mount that again, bought from Wooden Camera. It's 300 bucks as opposed to like the one from Red that's over a thousand. So wooden camera again, PL mount for my cinema lenses because cinema lenses are PL mount. But I have the Canon EF mount for more run and gun stuff. Can use my Canon lenses on it. And it uh, just makes it really simple and easy to use. And with the matte box, I always throw on, like I said, Tiffin NDs. I got a 0 0.6, 0 0.9, and a 1.2 here. But again, I also like to use some filters like Promis, Black Magic, kind of soften the image, bloom the highlights. Just depends on the style of shoot um, that we're doing, where I might use those filters to kind of give it that look. So that's essentially my camera build. Pretty simple, pretty clean. Uh, but now I'll get into why I might have preferred the Gemini over the Helium 8K. So the Gemini body only is around 15,000, whereas the body only for this guy is 25,000. So right out the gate uh, for the body, this camera is around 10,000 more dollars than the Gemini. Um, really kind of the only difference in the features are the resolution. This does 8K, the Gemini does 5K. Um, other than that, there's really not too much a difference of why this one should necessarily cost 10,000 more dollars. Um, and the Gemini actually has, and why it's so widely popular is the low light feature and the dual um, you know, sensi ISO sensitivity for the sensor, which that is the reason you know, after buying this camera, I wish I kind of went with the Gemini because a lot of what I do has been these kind of sports doc shows as of lately, uh, on the go, on the fly. You don't really have time for lighting setups and so you get caught in a lot of low light situations. So if you're, sh if you're looking to jump into the cinema camera game and you're looking at a red camera or anything like that um, and you shoot a lot of low light or, you know, dimly lit situations, the Gemini is probably gonna be a more fitting camera for you um, than like the Alien, the Helium 8K. So that's really the, the main reason why I wish I would have picked up the Gemini. Still an amazing camera. We I've shot a bunch of music videos, TV shows, docs with it. Currently working on a really big project uh, that I can't talk about because of an NDA, but it's absolutely huge and I'm so excited for it. Um, and I've kind of been given sneak peeks um, behind the scenes on my Instagram, but again, can't talk about it. Uh, that'll come out in probably a year or so. So, uh, but been shooting that entire show um, with this camera, with this guy right here. Sometimes I take it on trips for travel stuff. Other times I'll just take my DSLR. But um, lately I have been taking this on trips as well. It's always a little nerve wracking, but I do do it. I have insurance, so uh, there's always that. All right, so that's my camera breakdown of my new RED camera 2018. If you guys have any questions about RED cameras, about the gear I have, any other gear that uh, you wanted me to touch on and I didn't really touch on, I'm trying to think. I think I covered everything regarding the camera. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Here to help. I know like cameras like this and jumping into that level can be a little, little daunting, a little scary. It's a lot of money. So uh, any questions, feel free at all. Drop a comment. I appreciate you guys for listening, watching, whatever. I'm Jacob Owens for the Buff Nerds, and I'm out.